Hey, what's happening, y'all? Matt here. It is the end of November, and it is time for another Audio Mutt update. So, this month, the first video we had come out was the DI Box Basics video, where we just ran through some of the different DI boxes and uh, various ways of direct instrument input to a DAW that I had available, and checked those out and evaluated them against each other and just kind of saw what they all sounded like. So that was pretty cool. And then we had the music video for my original song, Crave, that was written with my buddy John. Um, and so those are both up and out on YouTube for you to check out. Please, there will be uh, links in the description. Go give those a watch. Um, that's good stuff. Next month, the first video we're going to have come out is going to be a parts caster that I refurbished for a friend of my wife and I's and yeah that was a really cool project it was uh, a, a guitar he inherited and it needed some TLC to get it kind of up to snuff so we just kind of go through that whole thing um, and then the music video I'm working on I'm hoping to have it done in time this was I had I had one video in mind and had started recording the song and getting everything done and ready because this was going to be a cover month and just about the time I got it mastered, I flipped and decided, you know what, I don't know that I want to do that in December. I want to kind of switch and do something different. So last minute, I've kind of been turning everything around and trying to get a new cover video out for the Twisted Sister version of Oh Come All Ye Faithful. Um, so I've just about got my mix. I'm going to do the car test later today and then proceed to mastering and then shoot the video fingers crossed um, that I can get that done here in the next week or two and then that will be ready to go out if not um, I'll still release it it'll just be a little bit later and there might not there might be two music videos in January as and or something like that I don't know it was a weird last minute random change I decided to make and <laughs> We will see what happens. So personally, uh, things are going okay. The kiddo is a hard thing to deal with. Um, and he's a good kid. But, you know, my I had some friends warn me that you're, you're going to get into rhythm. You're going to feel like you started to get things figured out. And then suddenly things with him are going to change. And you're gonna have to start over from scratch and that's kind of where we are right now we had it down we were doing good we were entering a rhythm um, we knew what he liked and didn't and now he's becoming more aware and more interested in the world around him and he doesn't want to fall as fall asleep uh, becoming a lot more challenging and demanding a lot lot more time so that's kind of been very difficult for me personally you know mentally emotionally physically um, and then also trying to get studio stuff done. It's made things very challenging trying to juggle all that. But again, that is why I had so much content built ahead of time. And we're just going to keep rocking and rolling and get as much done as we can. And um, yeah, the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about this month is kind of a follow up on last month. So last month I talked a bit about constructive communication, which is communicating with people the way that they need to be communicated with and understanding you know if everyone understands that we're all different and communicate differently then in my opinion the results are much better than if we assume that the other person communicates the same way we do and i don't know maybe this is part of being neurodivergent that i'm so used to the way i prefer to communicate is different from the vast majority of people that I meet, and that has been the case my entire life. So that's a concept that I've been intimately familiar with for a long time, and it wasn't until recently that I realized that that's not the case for a lot of people, that a large quantity, maybe even the majority of people, because they think so similar not like everyone thinks the same thoughts but their brains work so similarly they're used to the same kind of communication styles being transferred 
Um, and if you haven't looked, uh, go check out my buddy Stephen Farber on LinkedIn. Uh, he works with, I forget what the company's called, but they, I think it's Take Flight Learning. But they talk about the different personality styles and they use birds as a metaphor. So, you know, eagles are your take charge, um, results driven type of people. Parrots are your, your, your bright and happy, positive party people. Your doves are your peacemakers and your owls are your analytical people. That's an oversimplification of what they're talking about. But if you go and check out some of his stuff, um, he talks a lot about this and his work deals more with like HR and company culture, but that's where I'm getting a lot of my ideas from is that there are so many different ways to communicate. And so that's kind of what last month I was talking about this month. I kind of wanted to expand on that because I talked about communicating with, with people who you want to be part of your support structure. And so I kind of thought about following up and saying, so for those of you who know someone who is a creative, who is a freelancer, who is doing anything remotely similar to what I'm doing, or you know, there's so many <laughs> in the world today with digital visual art and video creation and audio creation and podcasting, there's so much out there. Um, in this kind of creative realm where people can express their creativity and do it freely online. Um, so if you know someone who's in that boat, how do you support them? Um, I kind of feel like that's something that when I look at some of the, the folks in, in my circle who have a hard time supporting what I'm doing, think a lot of it is that they're just not sure how. And then I look at, you know, for every one of people of the people in my circle who aren't sure how to support me and, and that sort of thing, there's two that are incredibly supportive. Um, I've got a really great group of friends and family behind my back that are keeping me going. So I thought I would run down some of the things that they do that keep me pushing forward, especially times right now when I'm dealing with the kid and it's really, really hard. And um, I'm gonna try not to name names necessarily because I don't want to, I don't want to use one person as an example and then others feel left out. So I'm just gonna kind of talk about the things in general that they do. So, you know, one of the big things is to just speak positivity when you're engaging on a creative endeavor there's not really any room for doubt it, especially if you're trying to pursue it as a career or a passion um, you can't really let doubt invade your mind so because the minute you start doubting is the minute the the thoughts of quitting creep in you know there's rick beato talks about back in the day with record labels, how they would plan for about four albums because you might get one or two hits off the first album or two, but you, an artist really wasn't going to hit their stride till the fourth album. And you listen to Gary Vee and he talks about how perseverance and patience are so crucial uh, to building a su successful business. And that's all true. These things take time, especially building an audience of any sort. So having people in your life that are speaking positivity and and things of that nature to keep you going keep you refreshed and making sure that you're not giving up on yourself and your dreams that is so critical so that's something you can do that is absolutely free is if you know a creative or someone who's starting their own business or a freelancer just speak words of encouragement. Um, tell them they can do it. That is one of the biggest things is to have people in our circle that believe in us. Um, I'm very fortunate that I have some people who believe in me. And a lot of times when I feel like giving up, that's what keeps me going. 
So that's a big one. Another one that's kind of attached to that is ask questions. So if you're doing something like this, there's usually a large amount of passion behind it. Um, and those of us who are passionate about things usually, not all the time, but usually love talking about them. You get me started talking about music production or audio engineering or uh, sound design, I can go on forever. Uh, there's a reason why I'm doing things on YouTube because I just enjoy talking about this stuff. It makes me happy. So that's one thing that I have some friends who are curious about what I do and they ask questions, they get involved. They, they like to know and understand what I'm doing because it is it can be incredibly complex and it's not something that the vast majority of people even realize is happening behind the scenes. So when someone comes into my world and gets engaged with me, um, that is a huge boost to my spirits. And not only do I get an opportunity to discuss something that I love, um, but I get the sense that someone else is interested in it with me and they're interested in what I'm doing with it. And, um, you know, there was a time when I thought I was going to be a teacher. That time has long since come and gone, but there is part of me that still likes the idea of sharing ideas and information. Again, part of why I'm doing a YouTube channel. Having someone that I personally know come into that world and participate kind of scratches that itch for me a little bit as well. And it's just a really cool, positive way. And it not only that, but it builds mutual understanding. So say you got somebody in your life who does something like this and you want to speak positively into their life. You want to have a, a good effect on them as a person, but you're not really sure about it. You've got some doubts. You're not sure this is a wise path. Maybe the best thing you can do is to show up and ask questions. Ask if you can sit in uh, a day of work or just spend a day hanging out and try and understand where they're coming from and what they're trying to accomplish. We fear things that we don't understand. And the best way to get over that is to engage and learn and come to understand and arrive at a mutual understanding that I think is really important. Um, but in order to do that, you kind of have to make sure that you're walking into this with your eyes and ears open and pulling off the blinders. If you want to see negative things, you will see negative things. And so you have to ask yourself, what effect are you wanting to have on this person's life? Are you wanting to have a positive net impact? Or are you just trying to confirm your biases that what they're doing is wrong? One of those things is going to have an incrementally better effect than the other. Because I can tell you right now, if someone is engaged in a creative endeavor and they're pursuing it passionately enough that this content is even relevant for you, they're not planning on giving up. Your, your negativity and your criticisms aren't going to force them off the rails. And if that's what you're hoping, that's not good and healthy for you. So it's, it's important to realize that what net good are you actually having? And they can succeed in spite of you or they can succeed with your help. And what side of that bridge do you want to be on? Um, another thing you can do is offer help. Um, I've got some friends that periodically, lately they've been coming about once a week, they spend an afternoon watching Patrick so I can come in and get some work done. And it is amazing. They are an absolute godsend and I wouldn't be able to get half the stuff done that I'm trying to get done without them. It's a sacrifice of their time, but it is, it has been, it has proved to be necessary, especially these last few weeks. So find, if you want to support someone, find ways just to help. Um, 
if it's, you know, just helping taking a couple things off their shoulders periodically um, so that they can focus on what they're trying to accomplish, that's great. And no, I'm, I can already hear in my head a lot of people saying, well, that's not my responsibility. No, it's absolutely not. But I do believe that we have to be the change that we want to see in this world. And another thing as part of that is just reach out, see what's going on, see if there's something you can help with. You know, I see in different, across all different spectrums of people, I, I hear frequently, well, you know, I haven't talked to so-and-so in forever because they haven't called me. I would love to hear from them, but they don't call me. Well, and then I talked to that person. They're like, oh yeah, I, I haven't heard from, from them and I don't know how long. I'd love to hear from them, but they just never call. See what's happened there? So I think a lot of times we get locked into that. Well, I don't because they won't. Well, I haven't because they didn't. Instead of being proactive and like I said, being the change we want to see in the world. So if there's someone who's engaged in these types of things that you care about, forget about who called who last. Quit, quit keeping score. I can tell you, you know, there's a period of about a year. We lost my mom, my grandmother, a couple cousins, uncle, aunt. We went through a period of a year or two where my family lost people, so many people. And something that I, that I took from that was that all, all that, those little things and the, well, I will, if they did and et cetera, et cetera, it's not important. Um, it doesn't really matter. You reach out. You you don't get involved in the petty drama BS. It's not worth it. It really isn't. Because that person could be gone tomorrow. You could be gone tomorrow. And it's important that we remember that. Um, and that we approach every day like it was our last and treat people the way that we wish we were treated. And of course, every, every situation is different. Some people have cut people out of their lives for different things. And I understand that that gets complicated. Um, this by no means is an assumption that I understand your situation or that I encourage you to reach back into any sort of toxic relationship or anything like that. It's just saying, try and be there for one another. So of course, another way, and this is probably the most, one of the most common free things you can do is if someone does online stuff, you know, mo most of my stuff is online and easily shareable. Um, there are people who, they do different kinds of art that uh, exist in a more physical space. But even then, they'll take pictures and videos and, and do different things like that to share their stuff online because these days, that's how you generate an audience. And the thing about that is you, as their supporter, can share it for free. Like, comment, share, subscribe, engage with the content online. And because if you don't, I know I've got some friends and family who don't necessarily understand how this works. So there's some platforms like Facebook and Instagram, where you have a certain number of followers, right? The people who follow your stuff, there is a chance that when you publish something, they will see it. However, there are algorithms and software programs on the back end that decide what gets pushed to who. Um, but the more people interact with a piece of content, the more the algorithm decides it's good content and then pushes it to other people. 
So one of the best things you can do to increase the visibility, regardless of platform, is to like, comment, and share. Anything and everything. It doesn't necessarily have to jive with your personal aesthetic, but that is another completely free way that you can get their content in front of more people and help them to achieve success. You know, it's there's a, a TikTok that went viral where the audio says something like, you know, my friends keep asking me why I'm not famous. Why aren't you famous? Because you didn't share my shit. <laughs> and it's humorous, but it's true. You know, and I know some people will take the attitude of, well, if they would make content that I felt that was worth sharing, then I would. Fair enough. But what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Sometimes it's that encouragement and that growth that inspires increased creativity, which then, through practice and experience, generates a better product. So sometimes, just supporting anyway is the right thing to do. Not only that, but that person you're supporting is going to remember that you were there before they were good. Because all of this stuff take, takes practice. And we all start from somewhere. So it's important to remember that. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the one that's financial. And that is buy their stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know too many creatives that want something for nothing. We creative people exist to put things out in the universe that we feel are valuable. It's, it's part of our, I don't know, I don't know what if I'd call it a neurology or, or a disability, <laughs> a curse or a blessing. It's something that we are driven to do. So, you know, at one point I experimented with doing a Patreon, but I ended up getting rid of it. I didn't feel like it, I almost felt like it was a little disingenuous because yes, I would like to be able to, you know, have more finances rolling in from my audio mud activities to contribute more to my family and to be able to outfit um, bigger, better studio, all that sort of stuff. Like we all want that. But I don't want to expect something from people for nothing. That's why I set up a merch store instead. That's why I started writing a book of guitar exercises instead. Things that, yes, if people support me financially, they get something for it. You know, that's, I released music and I was fortunate that I had friends and family and coworkers at the time uh, purchase a CD and it actually funded the, the production of those CDs. So I ended up not losing out any money. That was awesome. But things like that, if, if the person you know is creating a product that you can purchase, whether it's digital in the form of an NFT or, you know, merchandise, t-shirts, mugs, or CDs, you know, buy the, you know, maybe you don't use CDs, buy the digital version of the album off of iTunes or um, Google Play Music. Um, if they're a musician, add, add them on Spotify, you know, follow them, listen to their stuff. It may not be your cup of tea. That's okay. Check it out anyway. Are, are you more interested in blindly consuming or in understanding the person who created it? Because I can tell you, my music is the clearest window into who I am that anyone can find. Those are my innermost thoughts. Those are the things that I dwell on. Those are the things that I want to express. Those are things that I don't know any other way to express. People who who listen to and engage with and try and understand my music understand me a lot more than those who don't. And so I'll say that if you have a creative person if you want to understand who they are at their core, engage in their creation. And that is a 
really good way to come to understand them as a person. Maybe in a way that you didn't even know existed. And you know, it's pretty cool. I've got, I've got people who do all those things. I've got friends and family that like, comment, and share every post I make. I've got friends and family um, who buy my merch and they proudly sport it everywhere. And they, they tell people, just random people that they meet about Audio Mud. Because you look at that logo and it, it inspires questions. You know, like I said, I've got friends that help with childcare. I've got friends who speak positively into my life. And it's all of these things that create kind of a machine around what I'm doing to keep me going and keep me focused, especially on the days that I feel like I want to give up. On the days when, like today, and the kid woke me up at three in the morning and I am exhausted and frustrated <laughs> and... I uh, just want to go take a darn nap. And it would be really easy to say, well, I don't need to do an update video this month. But I remember that there are people who are encouraging me, who are supporting me, who are doing what they can to make sure that so long as I put in the effort, I've got a chance of success. It's not guaranteed, but I've got a chance. And I can't let those people down, and I can't let myself down. I decided that I wanted to take a stab at starting an audio production studio and releasing my own music and helping other people to create their art and do what I can to have a positive impact on this world and put things out into the cultural zeitgeist that are worth contributing. And sometimes we all need a little reminder of that. Think about your life, think about your circle, think about your entrepreneurs and your creatives and your freelancers and the people you know who have dreams and goals that are maybe a little bit bigger than themselves. And then maybe ask yourself, is there any of that stuff that I can do to support them and help them to achieve the success that they dream of? But anyway, there's, there's so many different ways that you can support and encourage the creative people around you. And it's important that we support and encourage each other. And for all of us creative people, Make sure that we return the favor, support and encourage the people around you. And let's all just try and make the world a little bit of a better place, one song at a time. <laughs> but anyway, I'll wrap it up here for this video. Um, thanks so much for stopping by and checking this out. I do truly appreciate you. You're awesome. And have a good one.